So as we've uh, been reporting, today is International Day of Press Freedom and uh, reporters uh, today published its new annual Press Freedom Standings. It paints a rather bleak picture of press freedom worldwide, saying that the environment for journalism is bad in seven out of ten countries and satisfactory in only three out of ten. Well, we're going to talk about it in uh, today's Global Grid for you and Oliver Farry from the uh, International Affairs Desk is joining me here to talk about it. Oliver, first of all, just tell us um, what the main findings then are of this report. Well, Reporters Without Borders took the unprecedented step of foregrounding the threat of uh, the fake uh, content industry and artificial intelligence to journalism, uh, particularly to public trust in journalists. Uh, it also criticised the new Twitter owner, Elon Musk, uh, and his, uh, quote, arbitrary payment-based approach to journalism as the new owner of the social media platform. The situation overall, as you said, is bleak, but also depressingly familiar with many of the countries anchored in the same position they have been for many years. The top ranking countries in the index are all European, four of them Nordic, and Norway is top for the seventh year in a row, followed by Ireland, Denmark, Sweden, Finland and the Netherlands. There's also a surprise in the top 10 with the small Southeast Asian nation of Timor-Leste, uh, rising to number 10. This is one of the rare bright spots for press freedom in Asia, a continent where most countries are in the bottom 100. Uh, these include the six worst countries in, dis in descending order. They are uh, Syria, Turkmenistan, Iran, Vietnam, China and North Korea. Some of these are also among the greatest incarcerators of journalists. China currently has 106 journalists locked up Iran 55 and Vietnam 43. Other countries that have uh, imprisoned quite a lot of journalists at the moment include Myanmar, Turkey and Belarus. Already this year, six journalists and one media worker worldwide have been killed doing their job. Among, this, uh, among those, as we've seen earlier today, is the Cameroonian radio journalist Martina Zogo, who was abducted and murdered in January. Yeah, we'll have more on that in just a moment, in fact. I mean, there are a lot of high-profile cases, aren't there? I'm thinking notably of the American journalist Evan Gersovich facing espionage charges in Russia. A lot of other cases are much less well-known, though. What are the criteria set by Reporters Without Borders? Well, as censorship and the safety of journalists are the most salient and more obvious metrics that uh, uh, Reporters Without Borders uses, but there are more mundane criteria, too. These include editorial interference by uh, owners, by advertisers and also politicians and also conflict of interest and uh, legal and regulatory restra restraints such as defamation laws. Even in, the, in countries that uh, score highly, like the ones we've mentioned, the, the Reporters Without Borders does uh, show some room for improvement. France also is in 24th place. It has improved slightly in recent years, but uh, it is uh, the, the report judges that the mechanisms aimed at combating conflicts of interest in the media are insufficient, inadequate and outdated. There are countries that backslide as well. The United States is one that doesn't do quite as well as you might expect. Uh, the US has freedom of speech enshrined in its constitution, but a number of factors, including intimidation of journalists, particularly under the Trump administration, has seen it fall in the rankings in recent years. Reporters Without Borders has also taken an unusual step in inviting uh, US Secretary of State Antony Blinken to the launch of its report in Washington today, which itself throws up uh, a conflict of interest uh, concern in itself. The US also continues to pursue the prosecution of WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange uh, for publishing classified data that uh, was taken uh, from uh, from the U.S. intelligence services, Assange is certainly a divisive figure. But uh, if he were to be extradited to the United States, it could have serious concern, serious implications for uh, freedom of the freedom of the press in democracies. And so his case is clearly not as egregious as some others around the world. But it does show that the United States itself is not completely blameless in terms of freedom of the press. Yeah, so press uh, freedom backsliding. What are the reasons, or the main reasons anyway, for that? Well, there have been a few notable slides. Uh, Israel is one, which has fallen to 97th place in the rankings. The report says that Benjamin Netanyahu's new uh, far-right government threatens the media landscape in the country. Senegal has also fallen, uh, an alarming 31 places, with an increase in 
quote, verbal, physical and judicial threats against journalists noted. West Africa in general has seen a decline in recent years, particularly after military coups in Mali and Burkina Faso. Both have expelled journalists and blocked foreign media, such as France Van Kat. Uh, Reporters Without Borders says that Burkina Faso had until recently been considered one of the success stories of Africa regarding freedom of the press, but growing violence and political instability have had a negative impact on journalist security and access to information. Another place that used to do very well is Hong Kong, which was 18th after the first index was published in 2002. It now sits at 140. And uh, the politically motivated prosecution of uh, people like uh, Jimmy Lai and his uh, media group, Apple Daily and Stan News, have deteriorated things, as have has the national security law, which was passed in 2020. And Hong Kong has 13 journalists and one media worker currently imprisoned in the world. Oliver, thanks very much. Oliver Farry, our international, uh, from our international affairs desk with that. Thanks very much.